Good evening, everyone. Before Mass begins, we're going to go over the psalm response for today's Mass. You can find it on page 35 in your missalette, um, and it has a little number 24 beside it. I'll sing it first, and then I'll bring you guys in. Thank you. Again, we'll be using that for Mass today. Thanks. Thank you. 
Please join us in our opening song. It's number 552 in the Gather Hymnal. Come, ye thankful people, come. Good afternoon. Good afternoon Father. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's call to mind our sin and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully, mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that may fervent in hope, faith, and charity, that may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is a source of justice. You over all, all things makes you lenient to all, for you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved, and those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you're, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us, for power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. You gave your children a good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. The one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, do you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat as long with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, yet when full grown it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables, to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, he who sows good seeds is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. How are you? Good. Good to hear. Uh, something that's important in the spiritual life, in our life, Christian life, is just to keep remembering the good things God done for us, just the good stuff that God has poured us from or poured us through. So I think one thing we should always do or often do is just contemplate where we were and where we are and kind of be in awe at the progress of the spiritual life. So just for a moment here, consider your own story. Consider your own history. Think of perhaps that moment in your past, in your story, that was your lowest. You were most sinful. Maybe you were just ashamed of yourself. Maybe you were just in a really dark place of doubt and anger and frustration. Maybe you got involved in drugs or alcohol. Maybe you're just having a very bad time with your spouse or your kids. Think of just that lowest place you might have been in your history, in your story. And think about just how you've gone or moved from that place. How much has changed between then and now? How God has shown you a clearer way, how he's brought you to sobriety, brought you to peace, brought you to joy, brought you to light, brought you to understanding, brought you to purity, 
brought you to deeper prayer, brought you to deeper intimacy with him, brought you to a deeper understanding of his will and his master plan in your life. And think about how none of that was your own doing. How all of that was his gift to you. All of that was the way that he loved you. All of that was the way that he knew how to care for you and how to cherish you. All of us have those moments in our lives that were just the lowest points. Sometimes we think that we can never go lower, but give us a chance and we'll go lower. We just do that as people. But every time we find ourselves at a new low or a new place of grief, a new place of shame, a new place of darkness, we can marvel at also how God can take us out of that and bring us to a new place of light, a new place of peace, a new place of love, a new place of hope. You know, St. Paul today in Romans tells us that we don't know how to pray. Our spiritual life, our prayer, our holy deeds, our Christian way of life, isn't this something that we just accomplish because how great we are? All of it is something God does through us, with us, and for us. Remember, before Christ comes on the scene and he does all of his Jesus stuff, before all of that, if you tried your hardest to live a good, holy life, you went to the temple, you prayed, you were charitable, you were loving, the best chance you had after death was hell. We couldn't save ourselves. We were all doomed to hell, all doomed to an eternity of separation from God. But he's the one that comes in and rescues. He's the one that comes in and saves. It's not you and I who do that. It's he who does that. And when you and I find ourselves at our lowest or darkest or more shameful or dirtiest of moments of our lives, it's he that pulls us out of that. It's he that draws us into a new life, into forgiveness, into joy, and into light. And that's how he builds his kingdom. He builds his kingdom by pulling us out, by pulling us up and giving us new life. And so it doesn't matter when we see evil, when we see hardship, when we see the world not living up to the gospel. It doesn't mean the enemy has won. It doesn't mean evil has the upper hand. It simply means there's still more love, still more grace, still more mercy, still more magnanimous joy and love and mind-blowing awesomeness for God to give to his world and for God to give to his children that we shouldn't be people of doubt, shouldn't be people who lose hope in the midst of tragedy, darkness, or sin. Whenever those things come to us or come into us, it's always a reminder there's still more goodness for God to do. There's still more love for him to give, still more salvation for him to win for us. So whenever we see people who aren't living up to how we want them to live, or we ourselves find ourselves in a low place, remember, God's there to, to change everything. It's not us who will change it, it's God. And in that we find greater hope and confidence in what he's able to do. And now we're able to remember, stay in that arena and keep fighting because it's his strength, it's his sword that wields the victory, not you and I, it's him, it's the spirit. You and I are weak. The best we can do is hell. The best he can do is paradise. And we remain close to him. Let him work in us. Never lose hope. In the darkest of moments of our lives or in the lives of the world, Remember, that's merely an invitation for him to come deeper into our lives and to change everything, to reveal to us something more beautiful and more magnanimous than we could ever imagine and ever conjure. That's the good news. 
That's the purpose of our lives in Christ. That's the work of the Spirit. Let us not despair. Remember how God has saved us time and time again, has forgiven us time and time again, and wants nothing more than to keep saving us, to keep loving us, to keep giving us new horizons of his love, and in that help others to build the kingdom, and in that, persevering to the very end, enter into paradise. That's why we do what we do. Let's help each other to let the Spirit work in us, bring us into new mysteries of his love, and in that, enter into paradise as saints forever in glory. I love you. Let's stand on and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and arose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Present now our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That the shepherds of the church will proclaim Christ, admonishing and teaching with all wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to terrorism in the world and for peaceful resolution to all conflicts between nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual growth of our parish community, that we will commit ourselves to the truth of the gospel with zeal, self-sacrifice, and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to remain free from worry and anxiety, confident in the Lord's victory over sin and evil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they protect, be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Pam Cianci, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for Ann Valeski, who died this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly God, we come before you this day in faith, and you hear and answer all prayers according to your will. May we always remember the good things you've done for us, even in spite of our brokenness, our fallenness, our sin, and our, and our inability to love you perfectly. You love us with an unbelievable love and an unbelievable desire to forgive us, to heal us, and to soothe our souls. We remember the good things you've done for us. 
May that always give us hope that you are always working within us and in others to purify us, to save us, and to build your kingdom. May we assist each other in our own brokenness to remain dedicated and close to Christ so that after persevering in this life and battling in that, in that, in that arena, we want to enter into paradise with the Father, with all the saints in glory. And we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for preparation of gifts is number 851 in the Gather Hymnal, Remember Your Love. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice into your hands for the praise and the glory of his name. Our Lord, and God, and Lord. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of our life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, with some joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you with the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks without us for to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our <coughs> brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Michael, Margaret, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, the last is called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body Christ you see true. Our communion song is numbered 809, I Receive the Living God.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you've imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So there is no Mass on Tuesday. Um, Tuesday is the ordination of Monsignor Losi as Bishop of Kalamazoo, so Maru's priest will be up there in Kalamazoo on Tuesday, so just pray for our travel and his uh, ordination. So there's no Mass on Tuesday because of the ordination in Kalamazoo. Um, also Thursday is uh, praise and worship adoration and reflection by Brandon. And so uh, 7 o'clock on Thursday, come, there's three of those left. And so come to at least one of them before the summer is out. And uh, that's all I got. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 497, Sing Out Earth and Skies. <laughs>